So you remember I said to you before, most questions, the vast majority, they give you a lead in. Okay, so here's the lead in I'm going to give you for this particular result, which looks really terrible. Okay, this is what I mean by a lead in. They'll say, hey, here's a result that obviously has some binomials in it, so therefore you can take advantage of binomial theorem. If you have a think carefully about that result, you can twist and turn and manipulate it to such a point that you'll get to this result. Now, before we go ahead and prove it, um, I did allude to this before. This is the sum of the squares of all of the terms on a row of Pascal's triangle. And apparently, when you add up all those squares, you get a particular number in Pascal's triangle, namely, next chair. If you go to Pascal's triangle, <coughs> and say, go to, I don't know, row... Where am I? <laughs> That's a bad one to go. Okay, row 10, there we go. If I pick a row 10, okay, and I square every single term on there and add them all up, have a look at what that thing is telling you. If you add up all those numbers, what should they add up to? On Pascal's triangle, where should I go? Row 20. I should go double the number of rows down, row 20, and I should look at the middle term, okay? Hmm. That's weird. Pascal's triangle is weird, okay? It's kind of like weirdo black magic. And this is what we're going to use to prove it, okay? So here's where I'm going to start. Remember, the name of the game is by comparing coefficients, okay? So I see there's some binomials over here, there's some binomials over here. One of the coefficients on this side and one of the coefficients on this side, if I compare them, will give me this. Mm. So the question is, which side would you like me to start with? Which one do you want to have a look at first? That one. Now, my brain, and admittedly I have a distinct advantage having done many of these questions before, my brain goes to the right-hand side because it's one coefficient. Okay? So I can work out in this expansion which one that should be. And apparently this is telling me a whole bunch of other ones on this side will be equivalent to that one coefficient here. So if I can nail down which coefficient that is, then I'll be fine, okay? Now the second thing I notice is, uh, this has a whole lot of x's in it. Yeah, a whole lot of x's. How many x's do you see in this line? None. None. So that tells you, when you're thinking about comparing coefficients, which coefficient is the easiest to go for? Which one has no x's in it? It's the, it's the constant term, the one that's independent of x, okay? So, at least now we've got a rough trajectory through this question. Let's have a go. Let's consider the right-hand side. Okay. okay. Now, for the right-hand side, in order to get to the independent term, the way I'm going to go is by working out the general term first. That'll be the easiest way. So, I'm going to say for the right-hand side, the, um, the kth term is going to be... All right, help me out. What is the kth term? I'll give you a clue. It starts with that. Now, usually we would say like NCK or, or NCR or whatever, but in fact, I'm on this, right? Like, I'm going to have 2N all the way up to the end. That'll be the highest power. So that's going to be 2NCK. Yeah. Then you have X to the Okay, so how many X's am I going to have? Answer, K of them. Which means that the other guy, this guy, I must have whatever adds up to 2N, right? That sounds to me like 2N minus K. What do you think? Yeah? Okay, let's massage this a little bit just so it makes it a bit clearer what I'm dealing with. The constant term, the term independent of x, will occur when all of these guys exactly cancel each other out. Yeah? So it will be a little more obvious if I combine them into one term and then I just make the power equal to what again? For independent of x? Zero. I don't want any x's, right? So I want x to the power of zero. So I'm going to go, let's combine this. Uh, this is actually x to the negative one. Do you agree with that? So in fact, if I get rid of that, I think it's k minus 2n. What do you think? Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. So now that I've got them as in this, on the same base, I'm going to combine them. Looks to me like it's... 2k minus 2n. Okay. So now it's really easy to see where it was not as obvious before. Okay, the term that's independent of x, uh, the constant term, I should say the right-hand side constant term, is equal to, well, what value of n will make this, sorry, what value of k will make this all collapse into zero? And the answer is k equals m. 
because then it'll be 2n minus 2n. That'll be zero. That's what I want. Okay? So therefore, the constant term is term n. That's the one that's going to make this part collapse, which, lead, which leaves me with 2n n. Oh, that's a relief, because look, that's what I have over here. Okay, so that's confirmation for me. Had I made a mistake, maybe it wasn't actually supposed to be the constant term. I'd get something here that doesn't match, so I'm like, okay, that was my first shot. How close am I to that? What do I need to adjust by? Okay, so, so far, so good. If I've got the constant term on the right-hand side, what I need is to find what's the constant term on the left-hand side. Now, be that they gave us this identity, you can see it's not gonna be a walk in the park to find out what it is. But I want you to see if you can start, okay? On the left-hand side, you've got two binomials. And you can work out, just like we did here, what each one of the terms is. Can you see if you can make some headway going from here to try and work out, okay, how do I sift out? Where are the constant terms in this mess of, like, expansions and that kind of thing? They're in there somewhere. You've got a big clue as how to identify them. Can you start with this line and see what you can do? Have a shot. 